Hi, welcome back to the Peregrine Dame. I'm Rachel Parsons and this time we're in Israel. Welcome to very sunny, very beautiful Jerusalem. I'm Rachel Parsons. I travel the planet largely alone in order to get a truer perspective of this amazing globe. No distractions, no itineraries. And I'm ready to show you that traveling solo doesn't have to be so scary. Located on the infamous West Bank in Israel, Jerusalem is a complex mix of ancient and modern, religious and secular, chic and traditional. A gorgeous monochromatic city, the building codes in Jerusalem state that all buildings be finished with the same cream-colored stone quarried locally for over 5,000 years, giving Jerusalem the moniker the City of Gold because of the sun's reflection off the stone. Having been inhabited for nearly 6,000 years, Jerusalem is one of the oldest cities in the world. Hall oh, of back at civilization. Say, India has been an incredible experience, but I finally got into Jerusalem uh, just a few minutes ago after being stopped and uh, interrogated at immigration in the Tel Aviv airport, apparently because I was traveling alone. Uh, that's a, a red flag for them. I'm uh, not sure why and no one could explain it, but that was the gist of the, the conversation I had. But now I have this gorgeous room. I'm so excited. I actually get to take a bath. Whee! After scrubbing off the travel grit, I get my first taste of Jerusalem. <laughs> and all the kids. There are so many kids here, um, even in the new city. I don't remember the last time I've seen this many people having this many kids, so um, Israel in general and Jerusalem in particular uh, especially are continuing their population growth. The old city is also earmarked by beautiful quiet streets like this where people still live and work and go about their daily business and also very crowded, very hectic bazaars full of everything from genuine Israeli artwork and goods to cheap Chinese imports that you can get anywhere else in the world. Let's go find some. Outside the old city walls, Jerusalem actually is a very, very modern city, very beautiful city that among other things has several pedestrian malls that have everything from shopping to bars to clubs to nightlife to really wonderful restaurants. Unfortunately today, it's a little bit empty because in a few hours at sundown, the Sabbath starts and will last until sundown on Saturday, which means on a Friday afternoon, it's basically just a good reason to shut down early. A few places that don't adhere to kosher laws will be open during Sabbath, but know that your options will be significantly limited. The one place that does jump, however, during the Sabbath is the holiest site in all of Judaism, the famous Western Wall, also known as the Wailing Wall. But, uh, the Western Wall is obviously a barricade between because the men and women are segregated according to Jewish tradition. And all the boys are doing their, um, their bar mitzvahs. And the women basically line up to stand and watch. According to Jewish law, when the boy becomes 13, he becomes a man, mm -hmm. meaning that he's now fully responsible for himself, that he is, um, he's in charge, he has to do um, uh, follow Jewish law. Okay. With a girl, it's when she's 12 years old. And so there's a... Today, for the religious, the Orthodox, the ultra-Orthodox, uh, there's a ceremony in the synagogue when the boy's 13 years old. He reads a portion of the Bible, uh, and he accepts upon himself, I guess, the rights or the responsibilities of Jewish law. For a girl, there's no actual ceremony in the, in the, um, uh, in the synagogue but uh, there might be a ceremony with your family, home, your family and friends. That's Charles, my guide. I splurge on a private guide for my time in Israel, and it's worth every penny, because I get private tours of things like this, the Western Wall Tunnels, Israel's excavation of the hidden section of the Western Wall. All of this is uh, that's how you can tell what is typical uh, Herodian stone from the era of King Herod 2,000 years ago, when these stones were placed here against the wall. Uh, all of the Herodian stones have this really unique border 
around them and when you're outside and can see different layers of the wall, you can tell how old each level is by whether or not they are marked like these stones are. This is a result of the Roman destruction of the temple of 2,000 years ago. I see, so those are all stones those that are, these are all over. These are all Herodian stones that were knocked over by uh, the Romans 2,000 years ago in Lane. And one of the things that the Romans wanted to do wasn't only enough for them to destroy the temple, they also wanted to destroy the ability of the Jews to live here. Right. So I remind you that what we had down below here was the main street of Jerusalem. This was Broadway, Main Street, whatever you want to call it. And so by knocking over the top layers of stones from the Temple Mount itself into the street below, they destroyed the ability of the Jews just to live there. As we head north through the tunnels in the Western Wall, we arrive at an ancient aqueduct. Okay, so if you look, this is, again, it's this gorgeous. Is a channel that's dug directly out of the living rock. Yeah. If you look up, you can see the ceiling. It's a man-made ceiling. They obviously dug the whole channel from the top all the way down. Oh and then they covered up the top of it with large slabs of rock. So these large slabs of rock up there, they've been there for 2,200, 2,300 years. Quite amazing. You said this was all pre-Herod? This is all pre-Herodian. It was built, built by them by the Hasmoneans and to bring water from north whenever there's flood waters in the during the winter, to bring them from the north down to the water cistern that the uh, Hasmoneans also built at the southern end of this. But again, when King Herod builds the Western Wall, he builds the Western Wall and he effectively blocks off uh, this water system so it's not used anymore. Well, on the other side of this, on the other side of the road, there is a uh, monastery called the Sisters of Zion. Um, the story is about 130 years ago, 140 years ago, when Sir Charles Warren, he was one of the original British archaeologists who did a lot of archaeology in this area, he managed to come down and find uh, this water system. Yeah. You can see it also extends under there. Yeah. When he was here 130, 140 years ago, this wall in front of us didn't exist. And the place was actually filled up with water. He came in here with a rowboat. Don't really know how he got the <laughs> rowboat in. He rowed across the water system. And on the other side of this wall, he found a door. He had no idea what was on the other side of it. So he decided to see what it was. He went in, he opened up the door, and the door led into the bathrooms of this nunnery. <laughs> the nuns, uh, they saw it was a good time to make sure nobody else snuck in. Yeah. So they built this wall in order to make sure that nobody else managed to get through. Next time on The Peregrine Dame, find out why so many priests in Jerusalem get into fistfights.